The unemployment rate in South Africa has never been higher. StatsSA tells us that at the end of last year, the unemployment rate hit 32.5%. You will struggle to find a country with a higher unemployment rate that isn't currently at war. Answering questions from Parliament, President Cyril Ramaphosa stated that job creation is the main aim of his administration. Every leader since 1994 has delivered strong rhetoric on job creation. Yet seldom has the unemployment rate halted in its steady climb from bad to terrible. Ask the average Johannes why we suck so much at job creation and you're likely to hear something about trade unions, BE and minimum wage. These three reasons only partially explain South Africa's complex unemployment problem. Another answer given is that unemployment is structural. But what does this mean? I've spent months squinting at statistics, scrolling through academic papers and speaking to experts in an attempt to go beyond the backyard bry answer, to explain what the hell these structural issues are. The first thing to understand about unemployment in South Africa is that like everything else, it's unequal. The fourth quarter 2020 unemployment rate for white people was 9%. For black people, it's 37%. For men, it's 31%. Women, 43%. For people over 35, it's 23%. For people under 35, it's 46%. Education is a massive divider. The unemployment rate for people with tertiary education is 17%. For those with a matric qualification, it's 34%. The structure of the South African economy is exacerbating this problem. The jobs that are being created are increasingly for those with higher levels of education. In a 2016 paper entitled Higher Education, Employment and Economic Growth, the authors write that the South African labor market is systematically oversupplied with those who have low levels of education. They go on to explain that the South African economy is increasingly demanding highly skilled and educated workers to match the growth of skilled occupations. At the same time, opportunities for those with no or little education have stagnated or shrunk. Look at the education level of the employed in 2000 compared to 2020. You can see a clear shift towards higher levels of education among those lucky enough to have a job. One solution might be to increase the number of people who have tertiary qualifications. Unfortunately, despite the government spending a large portion of the national budget on education, this isn't happening fast enough. As education economist Nicholas Spall pointed out, of 100 children that start school, approximately 60 will reach and write matric. 37 will pass. 12 will have access to university. Only 4 will complete an undergraduate degree within 6 years. The failure of the education system is structural, but this is not the only issue. There are countries that have worse levels of education, yet fewer unemployed people. Typically, if a country has a large workforce, yet low levels of education, the economy creates jobs for them in farms, factories or mines. Yet, by contrast, the South African economy is increasingly driven by its services sector. So what happened to the primary sector? To understand this, we have to go back a few decades and talk about the land. Strange as it may sound, in the early years of apartheid, South Africa suffered from labor shortages. In their book, Class, Race and Inequality in South Africa, Jeremy Seekings and Nicole Natras write that the South African economy struggled with labor shortages. One survey, conducted as late as 1969, reported shortages of 12.4% in white farming. Although data from this time is dodgy, South Africa likely still had unemployment or underemployment. However, the jobs on offer were on farms and mines and likely low paying. It seems some black people still had the choice of waiting for better jobs by, for example, working in subsistence farming. The uniquely South African solution to this problem, initiated in the late 19th century, honed through the early 20th century, and extended under apartheid, say the authors, consisted of the use of coercion to undermine independent present production and channel labor to mines, commercial farms, and industry. In other words, in part because the economy of 50 years ago demanded cheap black labor, government accelerated its policy of forcing black people off their land and left them with little choice but to work on white-owned farms and mines. In the latter years of apartheid, government pursued a new policy to make farms more productive through mechanization by, for instance, allowing farmers to write off new machinery against their tax bill. 
Combine harvesters in particular replaced a lot of workers. By the end of the 1970s, unemployed men were crowding rural labor bureaus in unprecedented numbers and queuing outside urban factories, right seekings in Natras. In striking contrast to the 1940s and 50s, millions were sitting without work in denuded and overcrowded rural areas. The bitter tragedy for rural households was that by the time the demand for labor in the capitalist sector stagnated and then collapsed, Peasant agriculture had been destroyed and the African labor force had become fully dependent on wage labor. There was sufficient work for people in neither the capitalist sector nor peasant agriculture. In his thesis, agricultural economist Jan Greilung states that the agricultural employment was at its highest level in 1962, with 1.8 million people working in the sector. The 70s saw an average decline of 2.68% a year. Job losses in agriculture have largely continued since the end of apartheid. Today, 810,000 people work in the sector. Mining has also seen continuous job losses over the decades, since its peak in 1980. Only 384,000 people were employed in mines in 2020. In itself, this decrease in rural employment isn't necessarily a bad thing. Some economists believe that as the economy develops, the agricultural sector is supposed to release labor. Workers are then supposed to move to cities and find jobs in factories. People may be unemployed for a period of time, but it's supposed to be temporary. Eventually, as the economy further develops, more people move into service sector jobs. In South Africa, this ideal transition hasn't happened. Instead, the primary sector has shared jobs. The manufacturing sector hasn't created new jobs and the new jobs that have been created are often in the education demanding services sector and aren't enough to keep up with the expanding workforce. Unemployment is not short term and cyclical, it's structural and long term. To better understand why this has happened, we need to have a look at what's gone wrong in manufacturing. When people think of successful manufacturing economies, they're probably thinking of somewhere in Southeast Asia with textile or garment factories that employ thousands of people at a time. South Africa's manufacturing industry doesn't look like this. As Neva Machetler, a senior economist with trade and industrial policy strategies explained to me, South Africa's manufacturing strength tends to lie in capital intensive industries such as auto manufacturing and metal refining. The economists Anthony Black, Stephanie Craig and Paul Dunn come to a similar conclusion in their 2016 paper stating that South Africa's manufacturing sector is unusually capital intensive compared to comparator countries. This is a particularly striking feature given the country's extraordinarily high rates of unemployment. This has been true since apartheid and hasn't changed much over the years. Instead, labor intensive parts of South Africa's manufacturing sector have shrunk since the country has removed tariffs and opened its economy to the rest of the world. Although trade liberalization has benefited some exporters and South African consumers who have access to cheaper goods, it has harmed labor-intensive manufacturing divisions such as textiles. In a paper titled The Impact of Chinese Import Penetration on the South African Manufacturing Sector, the authors found that import penetration from China from 1992 is estimated to have caused employment in South African manufacturing in 2010 to be 8.2% lower than it otherwise would have been. The reason for South Africa's manufacturing failure are more complex than trade liberalization and the topic of another video perhaps. When people speak about structural issues, perhaps what they mean is that South Africa is weird. We don't see the weirdness because we're inside of it. Apartheid warped labor markets and destroyed life in general by not allowing black people to rise above being cheap labor and then replacing them with machines when that became more profitable. The ANC government has paid lip service to correcting the awful structure of the past. But what it hasn't done is educate people fast enough or well enough. Nor has it created the conditions needed for low skilled workers to create or find jobs. Where the economy has done well, it's perpetuated the weirdness, such as the farming industry continuing to modernize or the success of service industries such as finance. If South Africa is ever to halt and then reverse unemployment, it needs to do things differently. Addressing this warped structure might be a good place to start.